Ethan Blake's day had started as uneventful as any other. He was a seasoned engineer aboard Galaxia Station, a sprawling hub where countless species mingled and traded. Today, however, was different. A malfunctioning reactor core in the alien embassy section needed his attention. He grabbed his toolkit, heading toward the trouble spot with his usual confident stride. The embassy's corridors were a maze of unfamiliar symbols and vibrant alien decor. Ethan followed the directions on his data pad, weaving through the crowd until he arrived at the reactor room. He began his work, oblivious to the commotion just a few rooms away. Zara, a diplomat from the Zephyrian race, was engaged in a heated discussion with her delegation. Her striking features, with shimmering skin and luminescent eyes, marked her as a Zephyrian of high standing. The meeting was abruptly interrupted when Zara caught sight of Ethan through the doorway. Their eyes met, and an unexpected surge of heat coursed through her. Zephyrians, known for their composed demeanor, rarely displayed such intense reactions. Yet, here she was, experiencing an overwhelming biological response to a human. Ethan, is it? Zara's voice quivered slightly as she approached him, her normally calm exterior visibly shaken. Ethan looked up, surprised by the interruption. Yes, that's me. How can I help you? Zara's delegation watched in disbelief as she tried to maintain her composure. I need to speak with you privately. It's urgent. Curiosity peaked. Ethan nodded and followed Zara into a secluded area. As soon as the door closed behind them, Zara's demeanor changed. I don't know how to explain this, but your presence has triggered a reaction in me. It's something that Zephyrians experience very rarely, and it's quite serious. Ethan, trying to grasp the situation, asked, What kind of reaction are we talking about? Zara's cheeks flushed a deeper hue. A biological imperative. My species enters a state of intense attraction when exposed to a specific stimulus. In this case, it's you. The absurdity of the situation dawned on Ethan, but Zara's earnest expression made it clear this was no joke. Okay, so what do we do about it? Zara took a deep breath. There's a solution, but it's not simple. We need a rare herb from a distant planet to neutralize the reaction. Until then, I will struggle to control my impulses. Ethan's mind raced. He needed to help Zara, but first, they had to avoid causing an interstellar incident. All right, we'll figure this out together. First, we need to keep this under wraps. Can you manage that? Zara nodded, though her eyes betrayed her inner turmoil. I can try but we must hurry. As they left the room, Ethan's best friend, Lucas, intercepted them. What's going on, mate? You look like you've seen a ghost. Ethan quickly filled Lucas in on the situation. Lucas, ever the pragmatist, suggested. We need to get Dr. Nyla Raines involved. She's the best xenobiologist on the station and might know how to help. The trio made their way to Dr. Raines' lab Nyla, a composed and intelligent scientist listened intently to their predicament. A Zephyrian heat reaction? Fascinating. I've studied their biology, but I've never encountered this in practice. We'll need to act fast. Nyla scanned her database, locating the herb. It grows on the planet Seraphis. We'll need to travel there immediately. Ethan, Lucas, and Zara prepared for their journey. As they boarded Lucas's ship, Zara's condition grew more intense. Her skin glowed with a radiant light, a sign of her escalating state. Ethan did his best to stay focused, knowing the importance of their mission. Lucas piloted the ship with expert precision, and soon they were hurtling through space toward Seraphis. During the flight, Ethan and Zara shared quiet moments, trying to understand each other beyond the immediate crisis. Despite the bizarre circumstances, a bond began to form. Upon reaching Seraphis, the group faced the challenge of locating the herb in the planet's dense, alien jungle. Time was of the essence, as Zara's condition continued to intensify. With Dr. Raines guiding them remotely, they navigated the treacherous terrain, facing both natural hazards and the watchful eyes of rival species who also coveted the herb's properties. After a tense search, they finally found the herb, glowing softly in the underbrush. Ethan carefully harvested it, and they quickly made their way back to the ship. 
The return journey was filled with a mix of relief and anxiety, as Zara's state stabilized but left her drained. Back on Galaxia Station, Dr. Rains prepared a remedy from the herb. Zara consumed it, her condition slowly returning to normal. The crisis had passed, but the experience left a lasting impression on all involved. Ethan Blake's mind raced as he piloted the small shuttle through the bustling space traffic surrounding Galaxia Station. Beside him, Zara sat with her eyes closed, her luminescent skin glowing faintly. The urgency of their mission was clear. They needed to find the rare herb to neutralize Zara's reaction to him. Lucas, Ethan's best friend and the shuttle's co-pilot, broke the tense silence. All right, Ethan, what's the plan once we reach Seraphis? We can't just stroll around hoping to find this herb. Ethan glanced at Lucas, appreciating his practical approach. Dr. Rains provided coordinates for a specific region where the herb is known to grow. We'll land there and search. The terrain is challenging, but we don't have a choice. Zara opened her eyes, her expression a mix of frustration and determination. I must apologize for the inconvenience I've caused. This situation is unprecedented for my people. Ethan gave her a reassuring smile. No need to apologize. We're in this together. We'll figure it out. As they approached the planet Seraphis, its lush, green surface came into view. The shuttle descended through the atmosphere, landing smoothly in a dense jungle. The air was thick with the scent of alien flora, and the sounds of unfamiliar creatures filled the air. Ethan, Lucas, and Zara disembarked, each carrying a pack of supplies. Ethan led the way, consulting his data pad for the exact location of the herb. This way, he said, pushing through the dense foliage. Hours passed as they trekked through the jungle. The journey was arduous, with the team navigating around enormous routes and avoiding predatory wildlife. Despite the difficulties, Ethan's determination kept them moving forward. Zara stumbled, her condition worsening. Ethan quickly caught her arm, steadying her. We need to find that herb soon, he said, concern etched on his face. Lucas scouted ahead, calling back. I think I see something up ahead. Looks like a clearing. The group hurried forward, emerging into a small clearing bathed in soft light filtering through the canopy. In the center, a cluster of glowing plants stood, their leaves shimmering with an iridescent hue. Ethan's heart leapt with hope. This must be it. He approached the plants carefully, using a small tool to collect several leaves. As he worked, Zara watched him intently, her eyes filled with a mix of gratitude and something deeper. Thank you, Ethan, she said softly. Your willingness to help means more than you know. Ethan smiled warmly. We're a team. Let's get you feeling better. With the herb secured, they began the journey back to the shuttle. The return trip was quicker, driven by their urgency to help Zara. Once aboard the shuttle, Ethan handed the leaves to Zara. Dr. Rains gave us instructions on how to prepare this. It should counteract the reaction. Zara nodded, following the instructions to create a medicinal tea from the herb. She drank it slowly, her eyes closing as the effects began to take hold. Gradually, her glowing skin returned to its normal state, and her breathing steadied. Ethan and Lucas watched anxiously. How do you feel? Ethan asked. Zara opened her eyes relief washing over her features. Much better. The reaction is subsiding. Thank you, both of you. Lucas clapped Ethan on the back. We did it. Now let's get back to the station before anyone notices we've been gone. As they flew back to Galaxia Station, the atmosphere in the shuttle was lighter, filled with a sense of accomplishment. Zara, now more composed, looked at Ethan with genuine admiration. You went to great lengths to help me. A stranger. Why? Ethan shrugged modestly. It's what anyone would do in my position. Besides, I couldn't leave you like that. We humans have a thing for helping those in need. Lucas chuckled. Yeah, and Ethan here has a knack for getting involved in the most unexpected situations. Zara smiled, a rare sight that lit up her features. I am grateful. Perhaps this unusual event will strengthen the ties between our species. Back on Galaxia Station, Dr. Rains awaited their return, eager to hear about their success. 
Did you find the herb? She asked as they entered her lab. Ethan handed her the remaining leaves. We did, and it worked. Zara is stable now. Dr. Rains examined the leaves, nodding approvingly. Excellent work. This will be valuable for future studies. Zara stepped forward. I cannot thank you enough, Dr. Rains. Your knowledge and Ethan's bravery have saved me. Dr. Rains smiled warmly. Just doing our part. It's a testament to what we can achieve when we work together. Ethan, feeling a sense of satisfaction, looked around at his friends and the lab. So, what's next? Zara's gaze met his, filled with a newfound sense of purpose. We continue to learn from each other, build stronger connections, and perhaps avoid such dramatic encounters in the future. The shuttle docked quietly at Galaxia Station, its crew feeling the weight of their recent adventure. Ethan, Lucas, and Zara exited into the bustling hub, each deep in their own thoughts. They headed directly to Dr. Rain's lab to report their success and return the remaining herb for further study. Dr. Rains greeted them with a mix of relief and curiosity. I'm glad to see you all in one piece. How is Zara doing? Zara stepped forward, her demeanor now calm and composed. Thanks to Ethan and Lucas, I'm stable. The herb worked perfectly. Dr. Rains nodded, taking the remaining leaves from Ethan. Excellent. This will be invaluable for future research. As the group settled into the lab, Ethan noticed Zara's gaze lingering on him. There was a mixture of gratitude and something unspoken in her eyes. Before he could ponder it further, Lucas broke the silence. So, what's next? Are we just going to pretend none of this happened? He asked, leaning against the counter. Zara shook her head. No, we can't ignore what happened. My people need to understand the potential consequences of interacting with humans. This incident could pave the way for new diplomatic protocols. Ethan, still feeling the adrenaline from their adventure, asked, Do you think your people will be open to that kind of change? Zara sighed, her luminescent eyes dimming slightly. It's hard to say. Zephyrians are cautious by nature, but this incident has shown that we need to adapt. I will do my best to advocate for these changes. Dr. Rains, ever the scientist, added. And we can provide the data and research to support your case. This herb and its effects on your biology could be the key to preventing future incidents. As they discussed the implications, a sudden alert flashed on Ethan's data pad. He glanced at it, his expression turning serious. There's a message from the station's administration. They want to see us immediately. Lucas groaned. Great. What now? The group made their way to the administration offices, where they were met by Commander Thorne, the stern leader of Galaxia Station. He eyed them with a mixture of suspicion and concern. Blake, I understand you had an unauthorized excursion. Care to explain? Thorne's voice was firm, leaving little room for evasion. Ethan stepped forward, choosing his words carefully. Sir, it was an emergency. Zara here experienced a severe biological reaction that required immediate attention. We had to retrieve a rare herb from Seraphis to stabilize her condition. Thorne's gaze shifted to Zara, who stood with dignified composure. Is this true, Ms. Zara? Zara nodded. Yes, Commander. Ethan and his team saved me from a potentially catastrophic condition. Their actions were both necessary and heroic. Thorne's expression softened slightly. Very well. But this station cannot function with unauthorized missions. You should have reported this immediately. Ethan felt the weight of Thorne's words but held his ground. With all due respect, sir, there wasn't time. We had to act quickly. Thorne considered this before sighing. I understand. But next time, follow protocol. You're dismissed. As they left the administration offices, Ethan let out a breath he hadn't realized he'd been holding. That went better than I expected. Lucas clapped him on the back. You handled it well, mate. Now let's get some rest. We've earned it. Zara, walking beside Ethan, glanced at him. Thank you for speaking up. Your quick thinking has saved me more than once. Ethan smiled. Just doing what needed to be done. And now we have to think about what comes next. 
As they walked back to their quarters, the station's corridors bustling around them, Zara's hand brushed against Ethan's. She hesitated, then spoke softly. Ethan, I would like to continue working with you. There is much we can learn from each other. Ethan felt a warmth in her words and nodded. I'd like that, too. We'll figure out how to make this work. In their quarters, the reality of their situation began to sink in. The adventure had forged a bond between them, one that went beyond mere survival. As they settled into a more normal routine, the memory of their journey remained vivid, reminding them of the unexpected connections that could arise in the most unlikely circumstances. The days following their return to Galaxia Station were a blur of diplomatic meetings and scientific discussions. Ethan, Lucas, and Zara found themselves at the center of an emerging alliance between humans and Zephyrians, each bringing their unique strengths to the table. As Ethan navigated the corridors, he couldn't help but notice the subtle changes in Zara's demeanor. She was more at ease, her presence commanding yet approachable. One morning, as they gathered in Dr. Rain's lab, Zara addressed the group. Our recent ordeal has highlighted the need for closer cooperation between our species. I propose we establish a joint task force to explore and mitigate such biological reactions in the future. Ethan nodded, appreciating Zara's initiative. That's a great idea. We need to ensure no one else goes through what you did. Dr. Raines, ever the pragmatist, added. I'll coordinate with the scientific community to gather more data. This task force will need both diplomatic and scientific expertise. Lucas, leaning casually against the counter, chimed in. And let's not forget the security aspect. We need to make sure these missions are safe and well-coordinated. As they finalized their plans, an urgent message from Commander Thorne interrupted them. Report to the command center immediately. We have a situation. They hurried to the command center, where Commander Thorne briefed them. We've detected a rogue faction within the Zephyrians who oppose our alliance. They believe that humans are a threat and are planning to sabotage our efforts. Zara's eyes widened in alarm. Who leads this faction? Thorne's expression was grim. A Zephyrian named Korath. He has a significant following and poses a real danger to our diplomatic progress. Ethan clenched his fists. What can we do to stop him? Thorne outlined their mission. We need to intercept Karatha's group before they can act. Zara, your knowledge of Zephyrian tactics will be crucial. Ethan, Lucas, you two will support with your technical and strategic skills. Zara nodded firmly. We'll stop him. We can't let his actions undermine everything we've worked for. The team prepared quickly, boarding a stealth ship equipped for the mission. As they traveled to intercept Korath, the atmosphere was tense but focused. Ethan could feel the weight of responsibility pressing down on him. They couldn't afford to fail. Upon arriving at the rogue faction's hideout, a remote outpost hidden in an asteroid field, they faced immediate challenges. The outpost was heavily guarded, and getting in undetected required precise coordination. Lucas piloted the ship skillfully, avoiding detection while Ethan and Zara planned their infiltration. We need to disable their communication array first, Zara explained. That will prevent them from calling for reinforcements. Ethan nodded. I'll handle that. Lucas, you cover our escape route. Zara, you'll need to lead the ground team. As they executed their plan, Ethan worked quickly to disable the communications array, using his technical expertise to bypass the security systems. Meanwhile, Zara led a small team to secure the perimeter and neutralize any immediate threats. They moved swiftly and efficiently, but as they approached the control center, they encountered Korath himself. Tall and imposing, Korath exuded an air of authority and menace. He glared at Zara, his voice dripping with disdain. You betray your own kind for these humans? Zara stood her ground. I seek unity and understanding, not division. Your actions endanger us all. Korath sneered. You are blinded by their influence. But it ends here. A fierce battle ensued, each side using their skills and technology to gain the upper hand. Ethan and Zara fought side by side, their coordination seamless. Despite the intensity of the conflict, they managed to overpower Karatha's forces, capturing him and dismantling his plans. 
With Koras secured and his faction disbanded, the team returned to Galaxia Station, their mission successful. The immediate threat had been neutralized, but the underlying tensions remained. Zara knew they had won a battle, not the war. Back on the station, Commander Thorne commended their efforts. You've done well. This mission was critical in maintaining our alliance. But we must remain vigilant. Ethan, exhausted but relieved, turned to Zara. We made a good team out there. Your leadership was key. Zara smiled, her gratitude evident. And your skills saved us more than once. Together, we can achieve much more. Lucas joined them, his usual casual demeanor tempered by the gravity of their experiences. Next time, let's hope for a mission with fewer shootouts and more negotiations. Dr. Raines approached, her face serious. We have a lot of work ahead. The data we've collected will help us prevent future incidents. But we need to stay proactive. The following weeks on Galaxia Station were transformative. Ethan, Zara, and Lucas immersed themselves in the formation of the Joint Task Force, their days filled with strategy sessions, training exercises, and diplomatic meetings. The once disparate groups of humans and Zephyrians began to blend, each side learning and adapting to the other's strengths and weaknesses. One morning, as Ethan was running diagnostics on the station's systems, Zara approached him. Her usually composed face showed signs of concern. Ethan, I've just received intelligence that Karatha's followers are planning another attack. They haven't given up. Ethan put down his tools, his mind immediately focused. Do we know their target? Zara nodded. Yes, they aim to disrupt the task force's operations. Their goal is to undermine our alliance and sow discord. Lucas joined them, having overheard the conversation. We need to be proactive. Let's set a trap. Lure them into a controlled environment where we can neutralize the threat without causing widespread panic. Dr. Raines, who had been working nearby, added, I can prepare a secure area in the research wing. It's isolated enough to avoid collateral damage, but equipped for containment. The team quickly mobilized. Zara used her diplomatic channels to spread misinformation about a critical meeting in the research wing, baiting Karatha's followers. Meanwhile, Ethan and Lucas worked on reinforcing the security systems and preparing for the confrontation. As the stage meeting time approached, the atmosphere in the research wing grew tense. Ethan, Zara, and Lucas, along with a small contingent of trusted personnel, waited in strategic positions. The lights were dimmed, and the usual hum of the station was replaced by an eerie silence. Suddenly, the entrance doors slid open, and a group of armed Zephyrians stormed in led by one of Koratha's most loyal lieutenants. The intruders moved with precision, their intent clear. They believed they were about to disrupt a critical alliance meeting. Ethan signaled the team, and within moments, the research wing was locked down. Barriers activated, trapping the intruders inside. Zara stepped forward, her voice steady and authoritative. You're surrounded. Lay down your arms and surrender. The lieutenant sneered refusing to comply. We will never bow to humans. Koratha's vision will prevail. Lucas, ever the strategist, flanked the intruders with a team of security officers. Your leader is imprisoned, and your cause is lost. Surrender now, and you'll be treated fairly. A brief standoff ensued, but the intruders soon realized their situation was hopeless. One by one, they lowered their weapons, submitting to the task force's authority. The containment was successful, and no lives were lost. With the immediate threat neutralized, the team regrouped in the command center. Commander Thorne praised their efforts. You've done excellent work. This operation has solidified our alliance and shown that we can handle internal threats effectively. Ethan, though relieved, couldn't shake the feeling that their work was far from over. He turned to Zara. This might be just a fraction of Koratha's supporters. We need to remain vigilant and continue to strengthen our defenses. Zara agreed, her expression resolute. And we must also continue to build trust between our species. This alliance is our best hope for a stable future. Dr. Raines interjected. We've made significant strides, but there's still much research and diplomacy needed to ensure lasting peace. 
As the days passed, the task force's presence on Galaxia Station grew stronger. Joint training exercises, cultural exchange programs, and collaborative scientific projects fostered a spirit of unity. Ethan and Zara's bond deepened, their shared experiences forging a connection that transcended their differences. One evening, as the stars shone brightly outside the station's observation deck, Ethan and Zara stood side by side, reflecting on their journey. We've come a long way, Ethan said softly. From that first chaotic meeting to now, standing here as allies. Zara smiled, her luminescent eyes glowing softly. Yes, and there's still so much more we can achieve together. This alliance is just the beginning of what we can accomplish. Ethan nodded, feeling a sense of hope and determination. As long as we stand together, we can face whatever challenges come our way. Their partnership had not only brought their species closer but had also shown the potential for cooperation and understanding in even the most uncertain times. The future was unwritten, but with allies like Zara and Lucas by his side, Ethan felt ready to embrace whatever lay ahead.